The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dearest mother and family, all those connected to the social means of communication, we celebrate today the great solemnity, the feast of St. James, the apostle, patronal feast of the country of Spain, the nation of Spain, and the Iberian Peninsula, and also in a particular way, a particular apostolic patron of all of Latin America, since Columbus, when he came, landed on October 12th. 1492, which was the feast of Our Lady of the Pillar, and it was Our Lady who appeared to St. James that encouraged him to evangelize, at that time, the, the domain of Hispania and the Roman Empire. And so we're all very close to St. James, and we pray that like him, we might also go to the ends of the earth proclaiming the gospel. To celebrate worthily the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on, on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who consecrated the first fruits of your apostles by the blood of St. James, grant we pray that your church may be strengthened by his confession of faith and constantly sustained by his protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we hold this treasure in earthen vessels, that the surpassing power may be of God and not from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not constrained, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed, always caring about the body of the dying Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. For we who live are constantly give, being given up to death for the sake of Jesus, 
so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since then, we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We too believe, and therefore speak, knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. To the psalm we will respond. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Those who sow in tears shall shall reap rejoicing. rejoicing. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those that sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Those that sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I chose you from the world to go and bear fruit that will last, says the Lord. And with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The mother of the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask him for something. He said to her, What do you wish? She answered him, Command that these two sons of mine sit, one at your right and the other at your left, in, the ki- in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I am going to drink? They said to him, We can. He replied, My chalice you will indeed drink. But to sit at my right and at my left, this is not mine to give but is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, Whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Father. There is a perspective in biblical scholarship that the Gospels began with the ending first. Especially if we look at the Gospel of Mark, there are six chapters out of 16 dedicated to Holy Week. 
it was because the kerygma, what was foundational was that Jesus had given his life for our salvation on the cross. That he had been buried truly and he was risen from the dead and that the one who is visibly buried and verified by Roman authorities that had been executed, put to death through political manipulation, but above all for our sins, well, he's alive now. And we can all live with him. And so the Gospels begin with living with Jesus Christ, risen from the dead. And as the apostolic kerygma grows, how Jesus got to Jerusalem begins to be more developed. When we look at the life of St. James, the great patron of Spain and the first of the apostles to be martyred, we see that three times he is with the Lord. Peter, James, and John are with Jesus. And the most striking moment is in Gethsemane. They're the three that are the closest to Jesus, and James falls asleep too. But James could testify that he was in Gethsemane. And whatever happened, he could testify that Jesus was ready to give his life for us. As we go backwards in the gospel, the next time is the transfiguration. And again, Peter, James, and John go up the mountain with the Lord, and it's there where James will witness Jesus glorified, transfigured. And so it's true what happened in Gethsemane, but I knew Gethsemane wasn't the last word because I've been on the mountain with Jesus. I knew it was going to happen, but I didn't know it was going to happen. I mean, I was ready for it, but I was, there's no way I could be ready for it. And so Jesus, I understood, took me up the mountain so that I'd understand what was really happening when he died on the cross. And I wasn't ready to be in Gethsemane with him, but I know that he's the eternal son of God. I saw the beauty, the splendor, the power, the light of God, not upon him, but come out of him. James is a witness of the transfiguration of Jesus Christ. He could understand what was to happen after Gethsemane because he had witnessed Jesus prophesy about what would happen. The time before that, in Mark chapter 4, is when Peter, James, and John go to the house of Jairus, and they're the witnesses of the moment when Jesus says, little girl, I say to you, arise, talitha kum, stand up. And James witnessed the resurrection of the dead. But he couldn't put it together yet until he had lived with Jesus risen from the dead and able to see that the way of the glory of Christ is different than the way we would think about it. But he could understand, he could intuit something of the power, the mission that he had from the cross, Gethsemane, the resurrection, transfiguration, into the mission of the church, the house of Jairus. And so James had to make memory of what Jesus was teaching him to understand what the power of the cross and resurrection could do. Jesus was forming his apostles to go out and raise the dead and to proclaim the gospel to the nations. The first reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we could say, as Pope Benedict would reflect, are like the Beatitudes of St. Paul. Everything is turned upside down. I mean, we're dying, but we're not dead. We're persecuted, but we're perplexed. And we're dying now, but if we die in our body, if we suffer what Jesus wants, if the cross is true, if I'm in Gethsemane now, the transfiguration, the resurrection is going to happen in the body of Christ, and the daughter of Jairus will rise from the dead. The mission will be fruitful. As mother, our mother founders has shared with us, these words of St. Paul are also like his Magnificat. The Lord looks upon the lowly ones, not the great ones. It's the ones that are hungry, hungry for God, hungry for truth, hungry for what matters and tired of the superficiality and wasting time and empty conversation and words. I want the real deal. Hungry for God. And all of that becomes fruitful as we live it day by day. How perfect to describe the mission of St. James. In Acts of the Apostles, there are two great victim souls. Stephen 
and James. The fruit of Stephen's martyrdom is the conversion of St. Paul. And the fruit of the martyrdom of James, Acts chapter 12, will be the mission to the Gentiles. But it didn't start that way. According to the apostolic tradition, St. James will go to Hispania, what St. Paul refers to in Romans chapter 16. He wants to go to Rome. He's writing from Corinth, saying he's ready to go to Rome now to begin a mission to the other side of the empire, and I want to go to the ends of the earth, and that's Hispania, the Iberian Peninsula. Whatever happens, St. James is the first one to go to Hispania. St. James had it in his heart that if Jesus is risen from the dead, the one who's glorified on Mount Tabor, the one who I saw raise the dead and he's sending me to the ends of the earth, then I know that he's with me. I've got to go out now. In a moment of tribulation for St. James, according to the oral tradition, Our Lady appeared to him. To encourage him, you could almost hear this first reading as being Our Lady's words to St. James. James, remember, death is a work in you, but life will be at work in you. It's true you're perplexed, but you're not driven to despair. You're persecuted, but you're never abandoned. You're struck down, but the mission's not destroyed. You have to learn that precisely because you are here suffering able to live your Gethsemane now, there's going to be a transfiguration on this continent. St. James will return to Jerusalem, and Herod, the grandson of Herod the Great, will summon him and decapitate him. Death by the sword. According to the apostolic tradition, his body doesn't stay in Jerusalem. His body is taken to Spain. The church understood the importance of the mission of James. It was James the first one to go to the ends of the earth, and even if he wasn't going to be the one to evangelize the whole continent, he was the first one to proclaim the gospel there. He was the first one to allow the fruits of the power of the gospel to reach the Gentiles. And the church so honored his mission, his conversion, his transformation by the power of the gospel, that just as the body of Peter and the body of Paul consecrate Rome to Christ, so the body of James will consecrate the ends of the earth to Jesus. St. James would become, in the words of our mother foundress, a Marian missionary of the Eucharist. A Eucharistic man because he would give his body unto death, just like Christ. And he would do so to the ends of the earth. What a powerful feast to remember that the power of the gospel is not ours. It's the power of the cross and the resurrection of Christ as we're transformed by him, like James, from Gethsemane to Tabor to witnessing the fruitfulness of the mission and the houses of those who need the gospel. Let us conclude with these words of our mother foundress. Fines terre. This place, the ends of the earth, was considered to be the ends of the earth, as the gospel passage says. According to tradition, the Apostle James thought it to be so since it is the furthest point of the land on the European continent. For him, it meant the arrival of evangelization at the end of the earth. James recounts for us that here, being a place of pagan worship and idols, he converted this people to Christianity. Here we see another very symbolic sign. In the place at the end of the earth, where the apostolic evangelization reached, a beautiful basilica was built in honor of the mother of the Holy Christ of Finistere, the ends of the earth. James, our mother founders writes, 
the apostle who reached that point on the Iberian Peninsula and who saw the immense ocean exclaimed, I have reached the ends of the earth. He was impelled and guided on his evangelization mission by Our Lady, who appeared to him on a pillar and invited him not to get discouraged by the obstacles and difficulties that he would encounter, but rather to walk through these lands faster and with greater ardor, sustained by her maternal guidance. That is to say, to be a Marian missionary of the Eucharist to the ends of the earth. All for the heart of Jesus. Through the heart of Mary. Dearest mother and family, trusting in our Heavenly Father's merciful love, the same love that accompanied St. James to the ends of the earth, we present our prayers and our petitions. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Through the intercession of St. James, we pray for unity in the church. Especially we pray for the protection of the church in Spain, for our Pope, for Archbishop Thomas Wensky, for the Cardinal Patriarch of Jerusalem and his protection, for Bishop-elect Scott Bullock, and for all the bishops in the diocese where we serve and will serve, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our mother foundress, in profound thanksgiving for her testimony of missionary zeal to bring many hearts closer to our Lord through the maternal presence of Our Lady, we pray for her protection, for her health, for her physical and spiritual protection, for all of her discernments and intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For religious, spiritual, and biological families, for the total healing of Sister Teresa, for the health of Sister Anna, Sister Sonia, Sister Mary Martha, Sister Rachel Mariana, for Sister Carmen and her treatments, for fortitude for Sister Elena, for the Viva Kids Summer Camp, for our protection, for our sisters in Paraguay, for our sisters and our brothers on their canonical retreat, for our Veritatis Splendor Institute, for the young knights of the pierced hearts and the young ladies of Our Lady, and for the fecundity of all of our apostolic works, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For an increase of healthy vocations to masculine and feminine religious life. For our brothers and sisters called to be in our religious family. For our vocational groups, Nazareth, Heart of John, Go to Joseph, and St. Philomena. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood in our archdiocese. For St. Vincent de Paul Major Seminary, its mission seminarians and faculty. For the University of Mary, Catholic International University the Augustine Institute, for the protection of all Christian universities, for Father Brian, the priests and parishioners of St. Michael the Archangel Parish in the Archdiocese of Kansas City, and for the Acts 29 ministry, Paradisus Day, and Shot Communities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. In thanksgiving for all of our benefactors, we pray for their protection, intentions, and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. For peace in the entire world, for the protection of the identity and mission of Our Lady, for the protection of all soldiers, especially for Jacob Martinez, Gabriel Sonier, Peter John Jude, Fernando Labrada, for all the innocent civilians and of sacred places, for, all, for the health of all babies, especially for Luca Sigal, Heleni Orna, and Mariano, for the protection of all children and adolescents from human trafficking, for the intercession, through the intercession of St. James, we pray for the end to religious persecution, May the splendor of the Catholic faith be elevated in the heart of the world and for the protection of the world from war, economic recession, corruption, and natural disasters, especially during this hurricane season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. For all who entrust themselves to our prayers, for abundant blessings for Roseanne Rogers and Emilio Rodriguez on their birthdays today, for the pregnancies of all the mothers for whom we pray daily, for the treatments of Ives Vidal and Mayra, for the protection of Nora Gallardo, Mercy, and Lucia, for the recuperation of Father Bowman, Manny Gonzalez, Arnoldo Medrano, Marianita, Flor Deshun Rodriguez, Joe McWilliams, Maite de Leon, Leo Leon, 
and Maria Lara, for the health of all the sick, especially for Luis Miller, Ricardo Arguello, Jeanette Cespedes, Gerardo, Anya, Ana Fenema, Dina, Joe Vargas, Rick Scholek, Sister Mary Ogam, Zachary Zapata, Reina Medina, Alan Arguello, Mercedes Arguello Lacayo, Nimia Cardenal, Luis Miller, Diego and Lupita Merizalde, Evangelina Meriz Maradiagra, Joe Garzon, er Edgar Vargas, Julie Segal, Giselle, Nora Perez, Yelene Ruano, Luigi, Doña Julita Lanzas, Maximiliano Oliver, Socorro Palacios, Terry Casa, Nieves Fernandez, Marilu Leon, Joe Pinon, Maria Luisa Ortiz, for peace, for Sue Matiaslavsky and Don Jose Castillo as they prepare to encounter the Lord, for the souls of our deceased benefactors, for the souls in purgatory, for the eternal repose of all of the faithfully departed, especially for Gregory Fawcett and Luis Acosta, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Good and gracious Father, we ask that you hear us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 13 in the bilingual section. Dearest mother and family, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Cleanse us, Lord, by the saving baptism of your son's passion, so that on the feast of St. James, whom you willed to be the first among the apostles to drink of Christ's chalice of suffering, we may offer a sacrifice pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Bishop Peter, Gregory, Luis, Joseph, Jodith, Andy, Anibal, Father Pavel, Tony, Alicia, Mary, Pascual, Victoria, Altagracia, Frank, Benito, Maria, Chris, Russell, Thomas, Andrew, Brent, Danny, Mariano, Dolores, Leonel, Georgina, Michael, Caleb, Paul, Jack, Bill, for the souls of our deceased benefactors, for the souls in purgatory, for the souls of those who died tragically, unexpectedly, and from war. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, St. James the Great, St. Margaret Mary, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. You take take away away the the sins of the world. world. Have Have mercy mercy on us. Lamb Lamb of God, you take take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Help us, O Lord, we pray through the intercession of the blessed Apostle James, on whose feast day we have received with joy your holy gifts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And as we prepare for the solemn blessing on the feast of St. James the Apostle, we will receive the blessing with the relic of Our Lady's hair and also this first class relic of St. James. And we pray that through Our Lady's intercession, like St. James, convicted of the truth of the gospel in the words of our mother foundress, we might be Marian missionaries of the Eucharist to the ends of the earth. And the ends of the earth is each heart that we encounter. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for the blessing. May God, who has granted you to stand firm on apostolic foundations, gloriously bless you through the glorious merits of the Holy Apostle James. Amen. And may he who endowed you with the teaching and example of the apostles make you under their protection witnesses to the truth before all. Amen. So that through the intercession of the apostles you may inherit the eternal homeland for by their teaching you possess firmness of faith. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you, remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. We ask St. Michael the Archangel, through the intercession of St. James, that we may be missionaries that begin to witness by the power of holiness in our lives 
that we may never be conformed for the many things that we do, but that we may know that we can never forget that holiness is the primacy of our vocation and mission. We pray that we receive the grace of conversion because only conversion of heart is the root of the fecundity of our apostolic mission that we may deeply enter into the path of following Jesus like St. James to be willing to die for him. San Michael the Archangel Defend us in battle be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, nothing to hell, Satan and all the evil spirits. Let us ask Jesus. to give us the graces that he gave to St. James, who had the privilege to see Our Lady. And that was enough for him to continue his mission. That Jesus may keep us in God, protect us and make us fruitful from the power of the Eucharist. 